Welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series Mathematical Module in ComSol Multiphysics. In relation to that, we started discussion about heat conduction equation that is unsteady heat conduction equation in two dimensional space. I have already talked about the physical significance of this particular equation. However, I will give you a quick recap for those who have not watched our previous video. So this is the heat conduction equation and it has a relation between the first order time dependent derivative and the second order space dependent derivative. If we are working in two dimension then we have two second order derivative with respect to each coordinate axis. So for this case this is x directional and y directional and those x and y are perpendicular directions in Cartesian coordinate frames. So this is how the equation is related and we have already talked about the physical significance. So that was done by this particular equation. So here we can see the difference in temperature with respect to the difference in delta t that is time depends on this particular function. So what is this function? This is the average temperature of the adjacent points. Adjacent point means if this is our point of interest then these two are the adjacent points. So we will be taking the average of these two points. So for here T3 plus T1 by 2. So this is T3 T1 by 2. So this is giving the average temperature of the adjacent points. And our temperature of interest is this one say T2. So if this difference exists be it negative or positive doesn't matter. But if this difference exists then there will be a heat flow. If this particular difference is higher in magnitude then heat will be flowing faster. If this is lower in magnitude then heat will be flowing at a slower rate. And if this is zero, then there will be no heat flow or we can consider the condition is at steady state. So those things were the physical significance. However, in the last lecture, we have not talked about the proportional or proportionality constant that is alpha. So this alpha is a material property and it indicates the heat diffusivity. Now you can just in intuitively you can just think what happens if the value of alpha is high. In that case there suppose there is a difference and that will be multiplied by a value alpha. If it is higher then the magnitude will be higher. So overall magnitude will go up. So obviously that will increase in heat transfer rate. So you can simply see that this proportionality constant indicates whether this heat transfer will be facilitated by the material or not. So conduct, conducting materials they have higher heat diffusivities whereas the non-conducting materials have less diffusivity. So this is the physical significance of the diffusivity. So I have already talked about this. So that depends on the boundary conditions or external conditions. And here this one depends on the material. So as a whole what we can tell is this rate of heat transfer or rate of temperature difference with respect to time depends on both external conditions and the material properties. And ultimately it depends on product of these two. So product of external conditions and internal material properties. So any of them if it is increasing then you will have a higher heat flow. Now coming to some more discussion because those things will be necessary uh, as we proceed with this heat equation we will be slowly proceeding with the heat equation and we will also be working on a separate playlist or a separate course where we will be taking only heat equation we will be solving it 
analytically, numerically and all possible ways will be exploring all the physical concepts, physical significances. However, for this particular course, we can just quickly give you some hints that will help you in understanding the heat equation. Suppose this is a case, I mean scenario where you have a two dimensional rectangular block and what happens if the left and the right walls are at constant temperature say T, T could be any temperature say ambient 25 degrees Celsius. However, the upper wall has a higher temperature and the lower wall has a less or lesser temperature. Now what happens intuitively you can you can simply think that heat will be flown from this point to that point obviously however when heat flows through the block so in the horizontal axis also with respect to time there will be change of temperature at every point and it will be changing with respect to time so just try to visualize you have this particular line under consideration and what is happening heat is flowing from here to here so the heat is crossing this particular line which we have imaginarily taken so when heat flows obviously there will be a change in temperature along the arbitrary line at different time instances so it will be true for all the horizontal lines you consider here however as the boundary condition says at both the ends it will be what it will be constant now just from from the very fundamental understanding if a function is like this where at both the end this is fixed say this is 25 or whatever but both the ends this is unchanged so how can uh, it vary because if it is a physical condition then the temperature distribution function cannot be discontinuous it will be a continuous function so a continuous function can be like this suppose it is increasing 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 reaching to a maxima and then again decreasing and reaching here so this could be a scenario there could be a scenario like this also or there could be scenarios like this it goes up and down up and down up and down again reaching to a constant point that is a fixed point so those are the possibilities and how exactly the temperature will be distributed that will be getting obviously by the solution and the solutions could be numerical and the solution could be analytical however these boundary conditions are giving us the picture of the I mean the nature of the heat distribution so here we can say if it is a sinusoidal or whatever periodic distribution there could be a time period there could be a frequency of distribution and those frequencies depends on the physical conditions so along this horizontal line you will be getting you will be getting a solution that may have your sine or cosine functions because it can be periodically up and down but here what happens you can see the at this point temperature is higher and gradually it is decreasing so you may get an exponentially decay function so i have not solved anything i am just trying to understand how exactly the temperature distribution may look like and i am trying to correlate with the known mathematical functions so here i should mention that obviously i have a background work i have done a background literature from there my concept is coming but still i am trying to correlate that understanding with the physical significance so that we can understand the scenario in a better way rather than only solving a particular equation so similarly here in this case we have just changed the conditions like in top and bottom now have at same temperature so in this case you may have a kind of periodic distribution like this or you can have a distribution like this but this is also periodic having a having a low frequency and if you have like this 
then you have a higher frequency so you can have multiple possible frequencies but again here along this horizontal line now you will be having a kind of exponentially decay temperature so this is one thing i wanted to discuss about now another thing is whenever we solve heat transfer equation we work with very ideal condition so can you imagine how you can if you have a rectangular block and you are telling that always the temperature will be t here and t here but if you just think logically so maintaining constant temperature at both the ends of a block is very difficult condition so you need to have very sophisticated arrangements in order to achieve this boundary conditions this is possible of also this is possible to make a higher temperature here and the lower temperature here but in order to making it fix over a period of time this is difficult again so this is very ideal or i can say mathematically consistent boundary conditions those are those may be unrealistic or i will not say unrealistic because then it will go in a different direction however what i can say is maintaining those boundary conditions are very very difficult however we can have a situation where we have a random temperature distribution across a space say the temperature initial temperature distribution is like this it could be a scenario because you don't know how exactly it will look like so just think about it if you have this conditions how easy it is to write the boundary condition as a mathematical function but what happens if you want to write this particular distribution as a mathematical function so this particular work this this was a difficult work and this was a work that that was unsolved for centuries and it it was fourier who was working with temperature distributions various kind of realistic possible temperature distribution and he gave a solution if you have any arbitrary function of initial temperature distribution that function or any function can be written as summation of sine and cosine functions so that is nothing but the fourier series and fourier gave this concept so he is telling what whatever might be your distribution it could be a triangular wave it could be a square wave or it could be anything but it can be represented as a as a summation of sine and cosine functions and that series can go up to infinite so that was the beauty of fourier's work so we'll come to this but the idea of this particular video was to introduce you with the basic concept so what we learned today we learned that those kind of boundary conditions are very limited conditions restricted conditions but we choose it in order to solve a mathematical problem easily in order to teach undergraduate level students very easily however when we come to research those sophisticated idealistic boundary conditions do not exist life is not easier and hence we come across this kind of distributions in real life and we have to proceed and that procedure was done by fourier he was a genius scientist he gave this particular formula that is now called fourier series and that is why this fourier series is very much correlated with the heat equation so we will be continuing with further concepts so in this particular series we will only talk about the concepts and the comsol solutions in a separate series we will be talking everything about analytical solutions and numerical solutions so today i stop here meanwhile i request you to subscribe to our channel if you are liking our videos then we will be uploading more videos thank you